The Vermeer exhibition was a huge critical and popular success, but it is worth putting the show into a longer term perspective and asking what made this particular exhibition so unique. Unquestionably, it was intensely visited, but other exhibitions have seen equal crowds. Here you see a view of the Vermeer exhibition. The crowds in each room, as you've heard, were intensified by the very nature of the 21 intimate contemplative paintings on view. Even with timed passes, the galleries became jammed with visitors who simply did not want to leave. But other exhibitions at the gallery have drawn huge crowds. Here you see one of the galleries in the 1948 exhibition of paintings from Berlin museums. These were works recovered by the United States Army and brought to the United States in the, for temporary safekeeping in the aftermath of World War II. Needless to say, public interest was intense. Viewed from another perspective, the long lines of visitors and their eagerness to see the Vermeer exhibition also have been cited as part of the exhibition's important story. Here's another picture of the Vermeer lines. Um, at this point, the line wrapped in essentially around the double block of the West Building, extending to the Constitution Avenue entrance. There was almost no possibility that these hopeful visitors would see the exhibition. That's pretty extraordinary. Yet, there have been other instances in which masses of visitors were willing to wait in line for long hours without even the certainty of seeing an exhibition. As one example, it's been mentioned before, here you see the lines in late 1976 waiting to see the exhibition Treasures of Tutankhamen. In that case, too, people lined up for hours before the building opened, and at times the line completely circled the block. Thus, the crowds for Vermeer, though extreme, were not unique, and in fact, as Deborah mentioned, the attendance figures were actually rather modest. After all, this was a small exhibition of only 21 paintings, and visitors needed to see it in a compressed number of days. So why was the Vermeer exhibition so extraordinary? Evidently, much of its significance came from the art itself. Glorious, beloved paintings brought together for the first time in centuries after years of negotiations and only shown at one place in the United States. Anticipation, press coverage, word of mouth, all these brought visitors to the gallery. In my view, though, the Vermeer exhibition was truly distinctive because of the confluence of a great exhibition and unusual public events. It was due to these events that over time, the Vermeer experience moved from intense interest to frenzy to near hysteria as the unforeseen became reality. This is the sign at the door to the West Building during the first government shutdown. If you, as you've heard, the show opened on November 12th, 1995, almost exactly 20 years ago. It was open for two days only and then closed. It then reopened for three and a half weeks and then closed. It reopened with private funds only to be closed by blizzards. There you see the photograph. In all, the, the show was inaccessible for more than 20% of its originally scheduled 89 days. This circumstance was indeed unique. It unquestionably challenged everyone who hoped to see the show, but it also imposed sharp demands on the museum. Uncertainty may be the most difficult thing for any institution, and in this case, plans changed almost daily in the face of new events. If the museum was closed, entry passes couldn't be honored. Guidelines were issued, then circumstances changed again, and the museum would need to pull back from the last decision. The gallery staff was stretched thin and its facilities were strained. Offices were closed for the shutdown and then streets were closed for the blizzards. Here you see the visitor services stamp, staff at the advance pass desk as they prepared for the exhibition in early November, 1995. Note how organized and in control they appear. <laughs> but their work became an evolving drama. <laughs> Soon the past desk was moved into the West Building where the staff dealt with thousands of visitors and faced bizarre and amazing experiences. Most visitors were patient and grateful, but others became frustrated and took their feelings out on the visitor services staff. One rather frail assistant was actually pushed over by a mad wheelchair. <laughs> 
another was struck down by an irate person wielding a walker as a club. <laughs> Passes were stolen from the desk, forcing one normally mild-mannered staff person to lope hurriedly through the crowd asking for help and shouting that government property had been stolen. <laughs> Eventually, the passes were recovered and the thief melted into the crowd. <laughs> Through this all, these remarkable people remained amazingly calm. One explained that all they could do was to be as nice to everyone as was humanly possible. And they did this with extraordinary grace, plus humor helped. It became an ongoing joke that visitors climbed over rope stanchions just because they were there. And there you see it. <laughs> the visitor services staff were on the front end, but other departments faced huge tasks. Publication sales, for example, was inundated by demands. Here you see the sales staff at one of their meetings. The initial printing of the exhibition catalog, 15,000 copies, sold out in days, followed by three more printings. Gallery managers initially ordered 20,000 Vermeer postcards. By the end of the show, the shops had sold more than 224,000. This meant that editors and buyers were on the phone almost daily, begging for faster printings and more deliveries, and sales staff were on the floor, fielding requests, taking names, assisting customers. The crowds also had a dramatic impact on the building. The interior environment was kept steady despite the heat of bodies and opening and closing doors. This was expected and planned for. Here you see some of the gallery's superb engineers. And here are the crowds again. But some of the problems were surprises. I believe that no one anticipated the effects of coats, sweaters, dust, and people rubbing back and forth and standing in line for hours. On a typical winter day, gallery staff sweep up a quarter of a pound of lint or wool dust. During the Vermeer exhibition, gallery staff were pulling out three 55-gallon bags of dust a day. <laughs> Typically, the gallery's wooden floors are waxed once a week. For Vermeer, because of traffic and sand and salt, the floors were waxed every single night. Through this all, the guard staff held everything together inside the building, calmly keeping order, <laughs> and outside, the guard at the door, through the night, and into the morning. They dealt with heart attacks, pickpockets, illegal vendors, ticket scalping, and this constantly changing set of rules and expectations. People got angry, as one guard said, I was called everything but a child of God. <laughs> but in the end, it somehow all worked, despite exhaustion, adversity, and uncertainty. Later, a staff member recalled, although we were exhausted and worked a lot, and there was a lot going on, on the telephone at home, in personal contact, and so on, although we worked our fingers to the bone, morale was really high. And another allowed that the reason for this was that it says something pretty wonderful about our society, that people care so much about peaceful art that they are willing to go to such effort to see it. This is an extraordinary story, and I'm glad to tell you that it's all preserved and available for research now and in the future in the archives, and we do invite you to come and enjoy it and study it as the opportunity presents itself.